Welcome to Medical Sales Live, the number one resource for breaking into medical sales and building your career. Hey, good morning, Anna. Hi, good morning. How are you this morning? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing outstanding. It's great to see you again. Great to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, hey, I've been so excited to, to catch up with you since our last discussions as you had just finished the program to kind of hear things, how things are going for you. But before we start on that, I'd love for you just to tell the audience a little bit about your background prior to coming to the college. Yeah. Um, so before I attended medical sales college, I was in finance for about five years. So I was doing that. Um, but I originally went to school, went to undergrad for athletic training. So I do have a degree in sports medicine. So after a couple of years in finance, it was a great career. I was very comfortable, but I wanted to get back into my background in athletic training. So just trying to figure out a way, the best way to be able to do that, um, especially without having to go back to school for a different degree or something along those lines. So I came across the program, Medical Sales College. I knew some other reps um, that knew of candidates that had gotten hired over other people that hadn't gone through the program. So they had nothing but good things to say about it. So I just decided to take a leap and go for it. So that was kind of my whole process, essentially. Well, bold statement followed by bold action for sure. So how was the, how was the program? So you, you were actually in our uh, San Diego campus. Tell us about your experience and uh, what was the day in life of an, of an MSC student all about? Yeah, it was a great experience. It was exciting for me to get back, feeling like I was kind of like going back to school, but not like I was signing myself up for another you know, two years, four years or something like that. So um, going to the San Diego campus, that was actually the first time I've left Michigan and lived outside of where I'm from. So that was a big deal in a sense to get out of my comfort zone, go somewhere else and kind of adapt to just new surroundings in general. But the campus is beautiful. Um, they have everything that we need. It was really exciting to kind of like walk in and, and see everything and meet, meet your classmates. But I mean, an average day, you know, you get up, go to class. We started at eight in the morning and then we would be in class for, you know, like four or five hours. We would break for lunch and then we would come back go until about like five o'clock and then after that um really just kind of like reviewing and studying um just getting ready for the next day because it is pretty fast paced each week you're kind of like moving on to something else so um yeah really not a ton of free time or extra time but um it goes by very fast so so you mentioned um, as you were beginning to explain that just that this is not like a four-year program. It's a 12-week program. Did you have, w w how, tell me about your expectations um, at the end of that. Did you have any idea that you would come out uh, and finish the program um, with the amount of knowledge, both from a clinical perspective and from a, uh, you know, a business acumen standpoint, as it relates to the sales and, and medical sales industry that you actually attained during that time? Yeah, I don't think it really clicked um, how much we were actually introduced to until I got into the industry and started working. And during my onboarding process, just starting to hear things that maybe I didn't realize had like set in in the initial like program. And then just like, oh, that's what they were talking about or that's what they meant, because it's a lot to try to take in and process, especially if you haven't been in the industry before. But um, in terms of the program setting realistic expectations into what you're getting yourself into, I would say 100%, it does a great job of that. Um, it's just, you might not realize like how much you know until you see it again. And then you're just like, oh yeah, I, I was taught that, or I remember this, or I remember that. So it was really cool. You know, maybe during the program you're overwhelmed or you're stressed and you might not think that you're holding on to something, but then it'll come back to you and then you just a little light bulb moment which is great, which is exciting. So it's like, oh yeah, good thing I, I learned that because I, need, I needed that. So it can definitely take some time off of your onboarding process as well. Well, obviously you did very well. And um, you know, when you completed the program, tell us about 
first off, your, your state of mind. Um, as you're coming to the close of the class and, you know, you're beginning to transition from classroom into, you know, that, that job search mode. And then secondly, tell us about what that experience was like. Yeah, so it was definitely um, kind of like you start to realize like, okay, wow, like this is coming to an end. This is real life. Like this isn't a classroom setting anymore. This isn't pretend like this isn't practice anymore. Like this is happening. So I think that um, as you're kind of entering or exiting the program, you know, there are a lot of big like presentations and projects that you have that you're focusing on. So I didn't really start the interview process like too early on in the program. I kind of waited until I was almost done to start that just because I wanted to make sure that I was as prepared as I could be because there was a lot that I knew that I didn't know yet and I wanted to wait until I knew more. So, but as you kind of like wind down and get closer to that, um, it's just kind of interesting to kind of see everything that you've been working on for the last couple of weeks kind of like kick into gear and actually start to just like happen or, you know, things start moving um, and definitely feeling a little bit more confident in, in the process because you have an idea of what these recruiters are talking about. You know, you have an idea of what, what they're looking for. So you can kind of present yourself in a way where it's like you are confident in knowing that you're one of the best candidates, you know, if not the best candidate that they're that they're looking at. So it was it was cool to just kind of see how I came in in the very beginning, just being very nervous, apprehensive, not really knowing. And then as each week passed, and you know, you learn more and you get more confident. And with each interview too, you know, it's going to be a little awkward and a little you know shaky in the very beginning, but it gets better and it gets easier. And you just have to keep keep at it, you know, and everything just will kind of fall into place the way that it's supposed to. At least for me, it did, so. Well, Anna, I think in everyone's journey, you know, as you as you finish up with MSC, there's a component that, you know, the student or graduate owns in, in their job search. And there's a, there, there's a work stream or pathway for which the medical sales college provides you ongoing resources for. Tell us, you know, what both of those look like. Yeah, so a lot of it is on you, like being the student. Medical Sales College is not like responsible for finding you a job. You know, you're not, like I said, you're not promised anything coming out of it. So it is really important while you're in the program to try to network as much as you possibly can. Um, you know, that's being active on LinkedIn, sending messages, trying to connect with as many people in the areas or the companies that you are interested in. Um, having like medical sales college, having that name, you know, on your LinkedIn profile or showing like your education and your experience, it does definitely help. And the um, managers that, you know, usually go, there are some people that will, you know, prefer to look at medical sales college students or, you know, they will look at them. And it is something that you can have a common ground or a talking point with. But I mean, there are some that just won't even really bring it up, honestly, but still having the tools. Um, that they provided you through like the interview prep to still kind of put yourself above the rest is what's really, um, really the cool part and the cool tools to be able to like, take away from the program as well. So, yeah. Fantastic. So tell us about, you know, your, your job and how you kind of landed that, um, that whole process. How long did it take? Were you interviewing with a number of folks? And, um, you know, how, how it was when you finally got that offer? Yeah. So. That process, it was a lot. So I was interviewing, you know, honestly, I came into this with the mindset of anybody that reaches out to me on LinkedIn or any type of opportunity, just be open to anything and everything. Because if you try to limit yourself too much to like a specific area or a specific like location, it does make it a little bit harder. So you want to be open. Um, the whole point of this is to, you know, to break in and get a job. So I came in with it. The idea of, you know, it might not be my dream job right away, but it's a job and it could lead to other things. So just being as open minded as you possibly can. Anybody that might reach out to you or message you, you know, connect with them, hear what they have to say. And then through that process, too, it gives you an idea of what feels right and what doesn't feel right. You know, what you might be interested in and what you might not be. So the more people that you talk to and the more kind of like work you put in, you can also narrow down yourself like where you want to focus or where you want to go with it. So that's what I did. 
And I was interviewing with probably like six or seven different uh, companies at the same time. So right after graduation, those first couple of weeks, like every single day, it was just like a couple to, you know, a couple interviews, just trying to do the best that I could to make sure I was doing my part. And then there is also MSC that will follow up with you and touch base with you like on a weekly basis to see if and kind of send you leads and emails and things like that based off of the areas that you've expressed interest in. So there is a lot that you can do on your own, but you do also have the support coming from the school as you graduate as well. Um, but I was very fortunate to accept an offer within two weeks of graduation. So it just kind of all fell into place, like I said, but I was, I put a lot of work into it. Um, I don't want to say that I got lucky by any means. I had to work very hard at all the connections that I made, following up, keeping detailed lists of everybody that you talk to. Um, so it is a lot. Of, it is a lot of work, and I know for some it can take, on average, like up to three months, um, and just kind of being prepared for that that to happen. You know, not really knowing. So that was kind of my my whole process of everything. Well, Anna, I know that when we spoke. As you were in the process with, you know, several different companies. Tell us about the, the company that you ended up choosing and uh, what life has been like now in the corporate world um, post MSC. Yeah, so I accepted an offer with Pinnacle Orthopedics. So they are the main distributor for Arthrex in Southeast Michigan, which is which is where I live. So I'm starting off as a technology associate. So for sports medicine. So really the first year is learning, um, a lot, a lot of learning and um, whatever company trainings they have you go through at the same time. So I'm doing like my Arthrex training modules, also getting in and seeing cases, labs, you know, different things like that, that I can get involved in to try to get as much hands-on experience as I can. So that's really been the first two months. So I hit my two month mark last week. So it's gone by very quickly, but I also know that we still have like a long way to go with it, but it's, it's exciting. And there are little moments every day where I kind of just catch myself pausing and just smiling like, wow, like we did it, like we're here. And it's just exciting to be in the position that I am and, you know, just to kind of see where this opportunity takes me. What's been the most gratifying and satisfying aspect of your career thus far, albeit two months? What would you feel like you've gotten the uh, the most um, the the most satisfaction from? Yeah, this might sound, I guess, silly, but it's kind of like coming to the realization that it doesn't matter what level you're at or where you are, you can still make a difference if you show up and allow yourself to. So whether it's helping somebody out that just needs you to run something like from one location to the next just to, to save them because they didn't have anything of that one thing or you know um, paying attention during an in service and realizing really tiny details and then the next morning during like the actual prep for a case being able to bail somebody out that you know was like having a hard time because they didn't really remember they had a thousand other things like in their head at the same time so just letting yourself like make a difference where you can and just being okay with the fact that it might just be something small, you know, and it might, and it might not feel like you're making that big of a difference, but to still, you know, contribute or to get like that, thank you. Like that was a really big help or like you saved the day, just, you know, little things like that, I think would be the most gratifying, but it's also motivating to get to a point where I can make, you know, an even more of a bigger impact, but you got to work with what you can, um, where you are. So that is, for me, what I would say. Well, and if you've made a very courageous move, as you said very early on, that you were you had already established yourself in a in in the in the field of finance. You'd spent several years in there. You'd had a successful track record, but there was something that was calling you to more, and and that you felt like you know you you could do more. You could uh, contribute more. That you had greater growth in front of you. Um, what would you tell somebody who was considering that, you know, in that same place and, and really debating their career as to what was next um, and, and the role that MSC played? What, how, what would you say to them? I would say 
first do your research um, and really take a look at yourself and know why you want to do it. You don't want to go through all of this because it's a lot. You know, the last thing you would want to do is go through all of this and then find out, okay, maybe this isn't, you know, what I thought that it was going to be or this might not be cut out for me because this really is like a lifestyle. You have to be all in on it in order to be successful. So just take a good look at yourself, understand the why behind it and where it's coming from. But once you know, and you know, typically people know, like they have that gut feeling, they have, they know what they want, just go for it, just do it. Um, I have learned that you're always worth the investment um, and things just have a tendency of working themselves out. So yeah, I big believer in invest in yourself. Um, it's never too late. Like I said, I turned 31 this year, made a huge career change. And, you know, I'm working with a bunch of people that are fresh out of college, which has been, you know, also another added layer to everything. So it doesn't matter, you know, if you feel like you're being called to do something else, especially, you know, this program, I can say from where I was at the beginning of this year before I entered it to where I am now, it's, it's completely turned my life around. So do it. <laughs> Go for it. Wow. Yeah. That, that's so inspiring. I, I'm so proud of you. You've, uh, I, I mean, you've really showed courage throughout this whole process and been extremely successful. And I'm really excited to uh, be able to check back in with you here in the months to come, because I have a feeling that uh, the best is yet to come for you, for sure. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for everything too. I know you and I had conversations during my interview process as well. You were a big resource to me, the school, everything, you know, just the entire process. I just can't thank all of you guys enough. So, well, we're still here. And if there's anything that myself or anyone else here at the Medical Sales College can do for you as you move forward, please let us know. And uh, we are we are very pleased and, uh, and proud of you. Congratulations for all that you've accomplished. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to Medical Sales Live. Remember to like and subscribe to this channel for the latest in all things medical sales.